Hey everyone, Young Ange out here, back again. Today we're talking about the new Unearthed Orcana Fighter Rogue and Wizard Psionics. Let's check it out. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, I just want to give a special thanks to all the new viewers who uh, came in. A lot of people saw my review of Man in the High Castle Season 4. Thanks a lot. This channel's all about entertainment, mostly about storytelling. So storytelling in TV, uh, movies, that kind of visual medium. But we also talk about comic books and your own storytelling via DND. &D. So check out previous videos, keep tuned for new ones. So just today, Wizards of the Coast released this new update to Unearthed Arcana. Now they've really sort of telegraphed the move to bring back more psionics and more psychic abilities. It's something that they haven't really had a whole lot of in 5e so far now in one of the previous updates the um, uh, aberrant sorcerer and lurker in the deep they did bring in some psionic abilities which um, the mind spike but we haven't really seen it full scale yet but now we do so what is a psionic or psychic abilities so their mental powers or instead of gaining magic through arcane or through worshiping your god or whatnot you're using your mind to create certain effects so it's a little bit different uh if anyone is a fan of old school psylocke from the x-men uh, her psychic knife that's the kind of thing we're talking about so in this first update the first one is uh, a martial archetype the psychic warrior so awakening to the psionic power within themselves psychic warrior is a fighter who augments their physical might with psychically infused weapon strikes telekinetic lashes and barriers of mental force as a as a psychic warrior you might have honed your psionic abilities through your own disciplined practice unlocked it under the tutelage of a master or developed it at an academy dedicated to wielding the mind's power is both weapon and shield so this is nice uh i kind of like these three subclasses because it is a little bit different uh i have had criticisms before of some of the ua updates that are more like well you could just talk to your dm about it it's just a slight difference from um, standard or from some other subclass they had before but this to me seems sufficiently different that okay I can see how it would need its own uh, subclass its own defined rules to really help the player and DM sort of hash out differences in how things would play so starting off psionic armament third and ten level features you can channel your psychic powers to magically augment your prowess when you finish a long rest, choose whether to augment your defense or your strikes. The chosen benefit lasts until you finish a long rest, so more or less one day. Augmented defenses. When you are a creature you can see within 30 feet takes advantage, uh, takes damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d10 and reduce the amount of damage taken by the number rolled. When you reach 10th level, this class, uh, the die changes to a d12. So we saw... Um, some similar features in the last update we talked to where there was an update to the classes uh, variant classes where we start to see uh, more of a tanking feature for the fighters so now uh, you can use your reaction to help somebody else is something that was kind of missing from earlier versions of 5e so it's uh, nice especially if you want your player to play defense second is augmented strikes once during each of your turns when you hit a creature with a weapon 
attack, you can also deal 1d4 psychic damage to that target. When you hit 10th level, this class, uh, the damage increases to 1d6. So uh, it's nice, you know, especially for each turn, I can really see it, you know, tuning up, especially at low levels. Uh, this is pretty awesome. Now, one of the nice things about psychic damage specifically, there are relatively few creatures that have psychic damage or have resistance to psychic damage. So if you hit something with this, you're almost guaranteed to get it uh, through 100%. It almost seems like when they were making 5e, they wanted to strip the psionics out. Uh, psionics were a larger part of previous editions. Uh, so a lot of the creatures in the monster manual just don't have it. Okay, telekinetic hand. Third level psychic warrior feature. Uh, you learn the mage hand cantrip. You, ca you can cast it without components and make your special ha spectral hand invisible. Intelligence is your spell casting ability for this spell. Uh, so I can see a lot of uses for Mage Hand. Um, I could even see potentially uh, a lot of nice combat uses for it. Uh, the only potential downfall is this using your uh, intelligence spell casting ability. A lot of fighters don't have a whole lot of intelligence. Intelligence and wisdom tend to be more of the dump stats for a fighter but hey why not all right strength of mind uh seventh level psychic warrior feature as a bonus action you can telekinetically lash out at a creature you can see within 20 feet of you target must make a strength saving throw against dc equal to a plus proficiency bonus plus intelligence modifier so pretty standard dc formula on a failed save, the target takes force damage equal to 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier and is telekinetically moved 15 feet directly towards or away from you, your choice. On a successful save, it takes half as much damage and isn't moved. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of once. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So this is pretty darn useful you can use this uh it seemingly up to five times assuming you can max out your intelligence uh this is kind of nice for fighters as you level up because they get uh stat increases quicker than most other classes will so you would actually be able to level up intelligence theoretically and it's also pretty great uh it's a bonus action so you'll get by seventh level you'll get your two attacks and now you can do another 2d6 and the moving is definitely very useful so depending on how your game does its rules um, you may be able to set up a bunch of your other players for attacks of opportunity on whoever you're fighting uh, now I know there's differences of opinion. Some people will say if a creature is uh, is moved not of its own volition, you shouldn't get attacks of opportunities. But I know a lot of people do play with them. So hey, see if you can talk your DM into it. So 10th level Psychic Warrior feature. When you take the attack action, you can forgo one of your attacks to project a bastion of psionic power in a 10-foot radius around yourself. It lasts for one minute or until you're incapacitated. For the duration, you and your allies gain the benefits of half cover and have advantage on savings throws. Once you use this feature, you can't again uh, until you do a long rest or until after you use your second win feature. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely a very nice feature uh, if you have a lot of people who are ranged attacking your allies this again is working more into the tanking feature of a fighter fighter class uh, the advantage on strength saving throws is also pretty cool if you're up against something larger something that uh, might require grappling or some other strength saving feature agonizing strikes 15th level feature your attacks can channel psychic agony 
You can hit a creature with a weapon attack. You can also deal 2d10 psychic damage to that target and force it to make constitution saving throw uh, against your DC. Unless the save succeeds, the target falls prone and suffers disadvantage disadvantage on ability checks until the end of your next turn you can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier minimum of once and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest that's pretty darn cool an extra 2d10 psychic damage uh, that could knock something prone uh, is pretty awesome i don't see any uh restrictions on it based on size so you could knock over giants you could knock over uh dragons or whatnot definitely a very useful feature it is level 15 so it's a little bit higher but all of this really helps to pour on the damage all right level 18 psychic warrior feature the power of your mind suffuses your entire being making you a nigh unstoppable force on the battlefield. Using your reaction when you take damage, you can give yourself the following benefits for one minute. The start of each turn, you regain 10 hit points. Your walking speed increases by 10 feet, or if you're prone, you can stand up by spending 10 feet of movement. Uh, I mean, come on guys. Clearly regaining 10 hit points per turn is gonna be the, the option of choice, right? Yes, there are certainly times when a uh, 10 foot walking speed increase is good, but by level 18, if your walking speed is that big a problem, you'll have some sort of a magical item that will increase it. Um, if you're prone, you can stand up by spending five feet of movement. That's also nice, but there's no way that's gonna be nearly as good as getting 10 hit points back per turn. Um, it's not, 10 hit points per turn at level 18. It's not going to be something that will take you from 0 to 100 very quickly. It's not going to be as good as healing from uh, a cleric or a druid or whatnot. But certainly, that could keep you up uh, or take a little pressure off whoever's stuck doing your healing. So that's it for the Psychic Knight. Uh, pretty good. It definitely sounds interesting playing it, um, especially if you're in a world that has more mental powers. So the roguish archetype. Now, here's one I think is a bit cooler. Uh, the soul knife. A soul knife possesses the psionic potential. They channel this reservoir of inner magic into tangible blades of psychic energy, striking at the victim's minds. They find easy employment as mem members of thieves guilds being particularly sought after as assassins since their signature psychic blades leave behind no visible wounds as a soul knife your psionic abilities might have haunted you since you were a child only revealing the potential when your psychic knives first appeared or you might have sought out a reclusive order of psionic assassins spent years learning how to manifest your deadly blades uh, so this is pretty darn cool. The one thing that, um, you know, it's not real specific on any of these. Is it just mental or is it, does it, you know, just damage somebody's mind? Or like, could I create a weapon with my mind and then sword fight with it or knife fight in this case? Uh, that's a little unclear. I personally would just have it mental. And then there, you sort of looked like you're unarmed or um, you're effectively unarmed in terms of like dueling or something like that. But uh, this is a pretty cool option, especially if you want to play an assassin. A lot of nice roguish characters. So Psychic Blade. As a bonus action, you create a magical blade of shimmering psychic power from one or both of your hands, so you can do a weld, wield. Uh, while one of your hands is manifesting blade, you can't hold anything in that hand. You can dismiss one or both blades at any time, no action required, and they disappear if you're incapacitated. 
The blade is a simple melee weapon with a finesse, light, and thrown properties. It has a normal range of 30 feet and a long range of 60 feet, and it deals 1d6 psychic damage on a hit. If you throw the blade as part of an attack, it vanishes immediately after it hits or misses its target. The blade otherwise disappears the instant it leaves your hand. This is pretty nice. Um, so I like that it's a 1d6. So if you aren't really big into daggers, if instead you want like a short sword or a scimitar or a dao or something like that, you can make your blade like that and you would still get that weapon's damage. Psionic Enhancement, also level three. You can focus your psionic power to give yourself an extraordinary ability. When you finish a long rest, you gain one of the following benefits of your choice, which lasts until you finish a long rest. You can communicate telepathically with any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. If a creature can speak at least one language, it can respond to you telepathically. So it seems like no animals with that. Um, I suppose there's like some fudge room with like birds or something, but it seems that it's meant to be have somewhat intelligent creatures. And which at level three is a pretty big, pretty big advantage. Um, you know, one of the big problems in traveling a world at this level is you might not know languages. Uh, you got to talk to this magical race, that magical race. So definitely awesome. Increase your walking speed by five feet. Yeah, level three, that could be pretty good, especially if you pick something like a halfling or a gnome, which only has 25 feet movement. Your hit point maximum and your current hit point increase by an amount equal to your intelligence modifier plus your rogue level. So depending on what your intelligence is, this is pretty awesome, especially at, at uh, low levels. So if you start at level one and you gain an extra five, I mean, you've come close to doubling your hit points. Now it's not quite as good as you level up, but you could have theoretically another 25 hit points at level 20. Um, this is definitely a nice feature as you go along. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Terrifying Blade. Uh, ninth level Soul Knife feature. Uh, your Psychic Blades now stoke terror within a target. Your damage to the creature with your Psychic Blade, you can force it to make a Wisdom saving throw. Uh, on a failed save, the creature is frightened of you until the start of your next turn. On a successful save, the creature isn't frightened and is immune to your terrifying blade for 24 hours. So that's definitely pretty cool. Um, it seems like it's always on. There's no limitation other than if it uh, succeeds a save. So the ability to potentially frighten uh, a creature on each attack, that's pretty awesome. So level 13, Psychic Veil. You can weave a veil of psionic static to mask your physical presence. As an action, you can magically become invisible along with anything you're wearing or carrying for 10 minutes. This invi invisibility ends if you make an attack or if you force a creature to make a saving throw. Uh, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier minimum of once and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Invisibility is always awesome, especially as a rogue. This is something definitely use a, a lot, uh, especially if you can jack up your intelligence, get at least five uses between long rests. Level 17, Ren Mind. You can sweep your psychic blade directly through a creature's mind as an action, while you have at least one Psychic Blade manifested, you can force a creature you see within 30 feet to make an intelligence saving throw. If you are hidden from the target, it has disadvantage on the save. On a failed save, target takes 12d6 psychic damage, so that's pretty darn good, and it is stunned until the start of your next turn. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and isn't stunned. 
one of your psychic blades vanishes after using this feature. Uh, and you can use the feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier until you finish a long rest. That's potentially pretty huge. 12d6, even though it is level 17, that's, you know, pretty good if you're dual wielding, uh, I don't know, swords or whatever. Uh, and each one can do 12d6. So if you're potentially doing 24d6, damage on one turn that's pretty darn awesome so that's it for the rogue uh it's definitely a very cool feature uh, if you want to play a sneaky assassin arcane tradition so the wizard at second level wizard gains arcane tradition uh psionics uh, wizards study magical power in all of its form including the magic of psionics those wizards who follow the tradition of psionics Hone magical potential of their minds, sometimes called scientists or mentalists. These wizards interact with the multiverse through the lens of their psionic aptitude and awareness. Psionics channel their magic by focusing their minds. By doing so, they can transcend their physical bodies, adopting forms of pure thought, casting spells psionically to bypass the need for components, and preserving the world with a broader range of senses. As a member of the psionics tradition, you might have awoken your psionic potential through the strain of your esoteric studies, or perhaps you joined a scholarly order dedicated to unlocking the magic of the mind. To me, this is the weakest of the three because there's no appreciable difference um, to gaining all these magic abilities through your mind or through arcane like there's no differentiation how is that different wouldn't the normal wizard be gaining these abilities through their mind i understand there's some slight difference but it's so slight it's almost not even worth mentioning uh so psionic focus you have learned to channel psionic energy through a special object a psionic focus you gain the object with this feature uh, we'll talk about the sidebar in a little bit. Uh, while your psionic focus is on your person, you gain the following benefits. The object is a spellcasting focus for you. So the object is a spellcasting focus for you. When you roll psychic or force damage for any of your wizard spells, you can re-roll any of those dice, damage dice that rolls a one, but you must use the new roll. So you're guaranteed to get at least what you got before. If your psychic focus is lost, you can magically recreate it by meditating for one hour during a short rest, um, at the end of which the focus appears in your hand. You get a focus, I guess. Um, now, the re-rolling stuff is very cool, uh, especially for psychic or force damage, but otherwise, eh, I don't know. There's no... I don't know, it just doesn't seem that great. Psionic Devotion. Your study of psionics begins to unleash your mind's potential. When you gain this feature, choose one of the following cantrips. Friends may chant our message. You learn that cantrip if you don't already know it, and it doesn't count against the number of wizard cantrips that you know. While your psionic focus is on your person, you can cast the chosen cantrip as a bonus action requiring no components and with the modifications below. Friends, the spell ends, the target doesn't become hostile to you. That's awesome because that's, you know, the biggest downfall of friends. Mage Hand, you can make the hand invisible when you cast a spell and controlling the spell is a bonus action. So this would be quite nice for, uh, if you wanted to pick pockets or whatever during combat or you needed it to, I don't know, get an object, grab a rope, whatever. Uh, message, you don't need to point towards the target or whisper your message out loud. Again, very nice feature, one that uh, negates a lot of the potential drawbacks of the spell. Thought for, six level psionics feature. While carrying your psionic focus, you can use a bonus action to magically transform your body into psionic energy. 
The transformation lasts until lasts four ten minutes until you use a bonus action to assume your normal form, or you're incapacitated or die. While in thought form, you are a figure of luminous psychic energy, and your psionic focus hovering within. Your form can appear as anything you wish, but is obviously magical. Is the same size as you and sheds a dim light within a five foot radius. Any other equipment you are wearing or carrying transforms with you and melds your thought form. Oh, melds into your thought form. Jeez. And you also gain the following benefits. Uh, sonic spell casting. When you cast a spell while in thought form, you can cast the spell psionically. If you do so, the spell doesn't require verbal, somatic, or material components that lack gold cost. So most of your average spells, as you go up, there's um, a number of spells, especially in the level, let's say three, four, five, and into six, where you got you got to have a lot of gems or gold items. Uh, but there's still a lot that do not require them, so it could be potentially useful. Psychic Resilience. You gain resistance to psychic damage and to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical attacks. Uh, that is kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure why the three physical are listed with the mental, but sure, why not? You can transform using this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum one, and you regain them all uh, when you have expended the uses. So this is sort of a, a way, a nice way, the psy psychic resilience, to make your wizard less squishy without allowing them to wear armor. Mental discipline, 10th level psionics feature. Your mind's power expands to greater heights when you gain this feature, choose one of the following spells. Dominate person, scrying, or telekinesis. You can add the spell to your spellbook uh, with no, uh, and can cast it without components. Uh, you can also choose, cast the chosen spell once without expending a spell slot. So that's pretty awesome. Telekinesis is at least level five. Scrying, I think, is six. Dominate person, I forget, but all are potentially very useful. I like that they kept it to the mental theme, Empowered Psionics. When you deal psychic or force damage with a wizard spell, you can add your intelligence modifier to the damage against one of the spell's targets. So that's pretty good. You're probably gonna be, uh, probably have your intelligence around 20, if not 20 by the time you hit level 10. So that's gonna be an extra five to force or psychic damage. It's quite nice. Thought travel. While using your thought form, you have flying speed equal to your walking speed and can hover. You can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. You take 1d10 force damage if you end your turn inside an object. Um, blah, blah, blah. The rest is, you know, standard. Don't materialize inside other things. Boilerplate. That's pretty cool. Level 14, nice flight form. It's nice. I mean, since you're a wizard, you might have flying already. Uh, you or levitate, uh, but hey, it's pretty good. All right, so thanks for joining us, guys. What do you think about the uh, attempt by Wizards of the Coast to bring back psionics into D and D five? Yay, nay, that's an extra thing that doesn't matter. What do you think of these features? A new psychic warrior. Uh, we have a new rogue and a new wizard. Would you play him? Yes or no? So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe for more content. And leave your comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you guys soon.